idea. If you want to talk about it, I'd love to hear specifics about what type of Mennonite you grew up as, mm. given that we have many different types in my area, Southern Ontario. That comes from Kendall. Hi, Kendall. I okay, Kendall, Kendall, if you're watching. So what type of Mennonite was I? So the church denomination I belonged to was called General Conference Mennonites. Though my particular congregation, even though we belong to that denomination, we actually thought that my denomination was way too liberal. Your denomination? Yeah. Because like <laughs> too... they acknowledge that maybe parts of the Bible might be allegory. Do they let people dance? No, no, oh, no, okay. no drinking, Good. no dancing, no just... some curse words. We're still <laughs> raising barns. We're still <laughs> doing all know, the Mennonite things. Some of you may view Mennonites. We're similar to Amish, right? That we're cousins to the Amish people. But I didn't grow up like that. I didn't. My parents were the first to actually leave the farm and their family. So my parents became school teachers, which was actually quite a huge departure. So even though my grandparents and my parents were raised speaking low German and all that kind of good stuff, which you, which you might imagine when you see a Mennonite thing at a food court or whatever, uh, if you see them selling wares at the side of the road, that was one generation past me. I actually lived in the city, even though we still went to the Mennonite church. And like when I was a young kid, there would still be things like the women and the men would sit on different sides of the church and we sang all our hymns in low German. That's crazy. All kind of stuff. So anyway, general conference. And then that church is now split apart on its own. Now it's just a Mennonite church without affiliation because of those darn liberals. Those so darn, darn liberal liberals. Mennonites, if you can imagine. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's crazy. So is that it for Discord? Questions? Nope. There's no. that the giant one now. There's the giant one. All right. So Tan writes. Hi, Tan. I'd love to hear the Christian perspective. Or your recollection of your Christian perspective. So what we have to go back in time to think of our old selves. All right, back in time. Of how you would have squared the circle, which is an interesting phrase, squared the circle in terms of which of the Levitical laws you follow, such as gays are icky, and which ones are no longer part of the new covenant, such as farmers sharing their crops with the poor, not planting two seeds in the same field, mixed cloth, shaving, eating pork, and shellfish. I love both of them. And on. So when language. we were Christians, how did we deal with those Levitical laws? Uh, am I going first? You're going first. I'm going first. All right. So when I was a Christian, I would say I dealt with them by not really knowing much about them. <laughs> That's how I dealt with them. It wasn't really hammered in with me. I have a vague recollection of my grandmother being that we couldn't eat. We could only eat fish on Fridays or we couldn't eat fish. Can't remember. Really? Which, yeah. That's, well, that would be the Catholic side, I think, coming up. No, like it was, no, okay. well, I wasn't Catholic though. Oh my oh, God. No. no, I wasn't Catholic. I was an Anglican. All right. And my grandmother was staunch that Catholics were idolaters. Okay. <laughs> we were not still Catholic. still on Fridays. Okay. Maybe, or no, it's just a vague recollection, but like none of those laws That's were. That's how the filet of fish came to be, by the way. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Because McDonald's kept they losing all their business on Fridays. Fridays. Yeah, no one was coming. Yeah. That's funny. All right. That's, That's weird, tri weird trivia. <laughs> weird Sorry. McDonald's trivia, courtesy Apologia. You're welcome, everybody. But I was less, I wasn't super staunch in that aspect. My teachings were mostly that you could disregard most of the Old Testament because the New Testament, we had a new covenant. And the most important thing was to love each other and to do unto others as they did unto you. However... There were many in my church who were very staunchly anti-homosexual. And you, like a woman couldn't be a priest for a long time to the point that my grandmother actually left our church because we got a female reverend and she was not having that. Even my church today would not be okay with that. No, she left. Okay. So the Ang our, we were in the, an Anglican church and St. Thomas was the name of our church and our church got a female reverend and she said, that's it, I'm out and left and went to a different church, still an Anglican church, but went and found okay. another church in a different town to go to. Nice. Because you wouldn't go to that church anymore. I don't know if that's a good answer to the question. His is probably gonna be more interesting. Well, that's interesting because you that's actually New Testament stuff. Like women can't, women must be silent in the church mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's New Testament. That's not and even- That's not for women to teach. That's yeah. not even the Levitical laws, but yeah, it's weird. So as in any Christian denomination, probably any religion, you know, everyone picks and chooses verses what they want to adhere to. So for example, my denomination actually did adhere to the mixed cloth thing. They didn't wear clothing of mixed cloth at all. Really? No. So you didn't wear mixed cloth. So cloth. I did. But, you did. But my, ornery like, basket. yeah. And of course, traditionally you would see Mennonites, they don't even wear Amish, at least they don't wear buttons and things like that. So there's some of that 
came out of there. No, be, me being this modern, modern man, right? Modern man. I, uh, I'm modern. I mean, we squared it away <laughs> as being, so the Old Testament was the laws. They're basically meant to show us how terrible we are, but like to show us the gap between the best we can do and what God demands. So the, we always learned that the New Testament was basically to illustrate that we could never on our own, no matter how hard we tried, achieve salvation. But okay. And so then at some point you just, so because we're under the new covenant, you just give up. You just. See, what do you mean by you just give up? You just accept the fact that ev you're like. Ev right. So Jesus basically narrows it down at one point. To, there's only really two commandments. Mm -hmm. Love Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. And that's pretty much as yeah. far as we were concerned. Those are the only two that were really important. And the rest, you just do the best you can. No, well, or the ones that, you, that fit the biases you have. So for example, <laughs> you want to keep hating gay people. Then that's fine. Then you then we got a Leviticus verse for that. So you could find biblical support. Sure. Because ultimately God would want you all to do all of the things in the Old Testament if you were <laughs> capable of doing it. But you're not. So for example frustrating to me because if you want to cure leprosy, you should be killing doves well, and spraying just, people with the blood. Yeah. And wash your hands, like Ray Comfort said. And wash that's your just hands. Just Bible science. Hashtag well, except Bible Jesus science. Jesus said you know, disciples <laughs> don't have to wash their hands. Oh. For reasons. Oh yeah, that's it. But that was in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. the Old Testament, that was science. In the New Testament, right. different. So anyway, um, so many questions. How did we deal with that? Mainly through hypocrisy. 